broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts. This is the Firearms Radio Network. The bandwidth for this edition of Gun Guy Radio is supplied by L.A. Police Gear. LAPoliceGear.com Live from Las Vegas, welcome to episode 103 of Gun Guy Radio. This is a podcast that shines a positive light on the firearms lifestyle. I'm your host, Jake Challen, and this is your weekly dose of positive firearms talk without the politics. And L.A. Police Care is offering an exclusive 10% discount to Gun Guy Radio listeners. Don't forget to use the Gun Guy discount code for 10% off. That's Gun Guy, one word, hurry, discount Offer ends January 31st, and Brownells helps make this episode of Gun Guy Radio possible. Selection, service, satisfaction. Find it all at Brownells. Go to gunguyradio.com slash satisfaction. Just a few announcements before we get going. Of course, we're in Las Vegas for SHOT Show, and with me uh, from... My left to right is Greg Bakken from Tactical Paradise. Hi, Jake. How are you? Hey, Greg. Hi, Ryan. Are you going to look at me or the camera? Uh, would you rather me look at the camera? Because if I'm looking at the camera, then you can see me in your computer screen, right? No, I'm going to just look at you and look, <laughs> look at the camera. <laughs> so Hancock, is the director of sales at FRN, is also with us. Hey, Hank. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we got to turn his mic up. And... Uh, Mike Emmert, the director of Firearms Insider. Hey, Mike. Hi, Jake. You skipped over somebody, though, left or right. Uh, myself? Myself? Yeah. I'm, I'm always on this show. I'm, I, I said I'm your host, Jake Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> I think he almost tried to confirm that. <laughs> I, I did hear Challen. <laughs> All right. Well, a few announcements. We have the Gun Guy Radio Great Bond Arms backup giveaway going on, so we're giving away a Bond, well, we're not, Bond Arms is giving away a 45 ACP backup, uh, Derringer 2.5 inch barrel, rubber grip panels, powder coated frame and bead blasted barrel and it's only 4 inches overall length and uh, it comes in at a $400 MSRP so you can get entered to win the, the Bond Arms backup by filling out your very own gun or gear review for the Firearms Insider. Right, Mike? Right. And uh, you go to Firearms Insider slash submit. That was my segue to handing that off to you. <laughs> but uh, I didn't to, catch on to that one. Go to firearmsinsider.tv <laughs> slash submit. You can submit your very own review. And for every review you submit, you're entered uh, and running for the Bound Arms backup. And uh, there's going to be four runner-up prizes as well. You know what those are? Um, what are those, Greg? You're providing those. The Verner Up Prizes? Yeah. A Glock keychain? <laughs> Whatever swag. <laughs> <is the> <laughs> <shot>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and me, a Mega Arms uh, sticker. <laughs> yeah, that, that works. And uh, what else can I think of? We'll see. A I, pick, I picked Wait, up a lot of we have a koozie. Silence the Coast stickers. Oh, that's good, too. Very cool. So, we'll figure out some <laughs> four runners. Up. Oh, there's four. We only came up with three prizes. And I've got a... Does anybody have an IWI hat that we can give away? I have a Caracal hat. Because I know the IWI hats are at least going for $5. I have a Car Caracal uh, uh, polo. They were giving away polos and hats. Really? Yeah. Cool. Can I get one? Wait, no. Nope. I do have an XDS shirt I can give away, though. Cool. Awesome. Is that because it won't fit you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you automatically just assume that? Yeah. That's, that's Why? Rude. <laughs> no one can hear you, Hank. Move up to your mic. I will say it's the first time I've met Jake yeah. live in person. And he is very rude. Very rude indeed. I'm going to have to get used to like looking like this. <laughs> You're going to have a kink in your neck at the end of this radio show. <laughs> so anyways, we're, we're doing a shot show show. And uh, we're doing a <laughs> shot show. Is there an show. echo in here? Shot show. <laughs> show, show, show. So yeah, you know, we're all in Vegas. We're all sleep deprived, a little slap happy. <laughs> um, 
the guys were wanting to get to the strip here. So we're going to knock this one out. But first, I have a shout out to uh, Izzy Long for his awesome motion graphic work. He created some really cool stuff for the network. He's a motion graphics designer. I uh, go to uh, check his website out actually at izzylong.com if you need any motion graphics. He just came up with a new one for this show, Gun Guy Radio, which is really impressive. And um, there's a link to that in the show notes as well. And also shout out to all the guys that came out here to uh, Shot Show to you know give give up their vacation time, you know do all this pro bono. Can't thank you enough. Mike, Hank, Greg, Mike S., Reed, Steve, Ariel, Nikki, Julie, Randy, Sean, Zach, Brad, and I, I might be m- missing someone. Anthony's coming out tomorrow, but he's also on the ground control team. Troy, how about the guys? Troy, yep. You say Ryan, the guys taking time off at home? And then, uh, yeah, the guys, yeah, some of the ground control team even took time off work at home. Um, Brian Cross, Ryan Machad, Anthony, and Devin. So thank you guys so much. And let's not forget the spouses that made the trip out here with some of them as well. Yes. That, yep. uh, was that a, I don't know. It, <laughs> Someone sacrificed their anniversary so, to be out here yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Brad was working his anniversary. So shout out to Brad West and his wife, Mrs. Susan West. Susan West. So, yeah. So Brad, uh, you can send your wife out next year. That's uh, okay with us. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, looking uh, also on bringing some new shows on the network. <laughs> Look for Tactically Practical coming to the network soon, as well as another big name that's an existing podcast. And what would that one be? We don't know. Oh, or, it's, a is that, oh. it's a secret. Is that the guy we this met? This is how we build buzz. Wait, is that the person we met on the floor? It, no, no, that was uh, Handgun Newbie from Tactically Practical. Oh, that's his episode. Got it. Tactical, his, or his, his show. show is Tactical yes. Practical. Yes. No. So what's Handgun Newbie then? No, it's, it's not, that's, tact- that's it's not his, Tactical Practical. <laughs> that's his. That's his internet name. He's on the down low. We oh. We're not using his real name. He's off the grid. He's off the grid. Copy. Yeah. He's. Uh, I think he recycles his own waste, but no, not really. <laughs> So, so, like, we're that's not perfectly like, okay. Like, we don't use Hank's real name, right? <laughs> okay, got it. Everybody, up, to this time, on up to this point, everybody <laughs> that. that's just strange, Hank. You know, strange, Hank. I get it. Yes, strange, Hank. Strange All right, Hank. so the main topic we're talking, uh, what possibly might be the top 20 products of the shot show. We're just, just um. We had a hard time narrowing it down to the top 20. Yeah, this is, I guess, maybe our top 20. That's why there's only 19 on the list. <laughs> Are there really? I can add some more if we need to. Uh, okay, well, let's go through them uh, in order that we have them here. So, you know, the Glock 41 and 42, the new 380. Let's start with the 380. Version. Who's was that? Who's the, Who's thought that was the top? Uh, like, are these top products that we, like, think are awesome? No, 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 no. These are top products that we either think personally uh, are awesome, or we we see that there's a lot of buzz going on, and people, uh, you know, fans of you know. Yeah, I was talking to the Glock gurus today, actually, because I had some questions. When we were at the range. They, I've been we've been misinformed because I said on my show when we recorded it on uh, to Monday night. The Glock guy at the range told me that they only made 1,500 of the Glock 42. That's a lie. That they apparently are making 10,000 a month, and they still can't keep up, they said, with the sales, even though they haven't actually hit the sales floor yet. They hit, he said, the end of this week. Monday, I think, is the day. So they, when they come where did that the, fake number come from? The guy at the range from Glock told me 1,500 was what they made because he said that they didn't think that... This gun would sell that much, so they said they only made 1,500 of them, and so then they sold out of them, he said. And we questioned that right away, too. But he also stated that uh, the reason why it hadn't been imported before was because of tax tax stamp purposes. And that was incorrect as well, too. Your mic sucks. That's because Hank doesn't project his voice well. <laughs> 
guy. It starts off real loud. That's because we were supposed to, if you stand, it's supposed to project better. And we used to do that in a real studio. And you took away those capabilities for it. So guess what? Now I'm standing the rest of the episode. <laughs> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. I just drank milk. That's like one of the best things you can do before broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> is that why you bought anyway. a gallon of milk when we're here? Like, Let's jump back to the 42, days. though. Okay, yeah. Jump to the so 42. they said 42 wasn't delivered into the U.S. because it's uh, or wasn't be able to be distributed in the U.S. originally because it had no sporting purpose as a 380 round, right? So that's why Glock couldn't bring transport in 380s. No 380 has ever been transported in to the uh, U.S. It's never been transported in. I don't know how to say the right word. Uh, but anyway, what do you um, uh, thinking about the Glock Forty One? Did anybody check that one out? The world's longest Glock. I yeah, I went over there and shot it. Uh, I mean, so did I. I mean, it's another Glock. I mean, yep. it was nice. I mean, yeah, there's nothing special to me about the Forty One. I don't know. I don't know anybody that's excited about it. I guess if I was in the competitive shooting world, I guess it could be exciting. But I don't know. It, it's thin. I mean, it's like their 9 millimeter version. This guy right here is exciting. You know, as Modern far as width, it's very, it very similar. It's fun to shoot, for sure. Cause I'm got, not. This is not a list that we like. This is a list that I we're seeing a lot of buzz going on about. I mean, it was fun to shoot at the range, but I just... Why would I go buy one? No, probably not. I'd be more inclined to buy the 42, even though I don't know that I'd buy the 42 either. But that's the other thing. They said MSRP on the 42 was 399 but then the guy said, don't be... Uh, surprise if you see it for 450 into the upwards of 650 because people he said like to take advantage of people. Yeah, well, you can hardly find a Glock anymore new for less than 550, right? That's true. I but, mean, I mean, maybe you're right around 500. But why? I, most places, at least when you buy a car, if it's MSRP, you can usually get it under MSRP. You can't do that with firearms. Depends on the demand. Yeah, I guess with the MSRP of all the ARs. Yeah year ago. Yeah. True. So let's move on to the Rock River 1911 Poly. So it's a polymer 19, you know, polymer frame 1911. It has a steel insert so the slide rails. That's true. How long have they been steel. talking about bringing that gun out? Well, it, it premiered at SHOT Show three years ago. And then what happened? And then the AR-15 craziness happened. Right, so they got knocked, put in they the back burner. All the production to focus on. Uh, <clears throat> what happened three years ago to make the AR so exciting? Last year, it premiered. You said three years ago. It premiered three years ago. Anyway, okay, cool. So no, Greg's talking about between when it premiered and Sandy Hook. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Hank, you did, being, you did a video. Great. You did a video with the. Um, Poly 1911. I did one as well, but yours is posted. What did you think of it? Uh, I thought it felt really nice. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about in the video was the fact that a lot of people are surprised that Rock River is even making a 1911, not knowing that that's how they actually got their start. Um, so it was just natural for them to uh, eventually come out with a Poly version uh, because everything's Poly. You know what I thought was cool about it? Sorry, I was trying to figure out why you're standing. <laughs> That's where you're and I can hear my myself echoing through your own mic. But uh, I thought it was cool that, that he said it was four ounces lighter than the average 1911, which is pretty impressive because 1911s can be heavy at times, right? Yes. Is that the whole point of why they came out with the Palmer 1911? Yeah, for sure. And to make it uh, to make it more affordable as well, mm -hmm. too. Well, it gives them yeah. options. It's different, you know. Now they can do it in. Flat, dark earth, and well, yeah, but he he was saying that colors. they're they're all steel. Nineteen elevens were like twenty five hundred. Yeah, they're expensive. That's why it's in there. Yeah, I don't I don't know what they're all steels run for. What? It, how much uh, was the Palmer one? Five hundred. But it sounded like they were phasing yeah, out. Yeah, that was just steel. going off of what it, he it, said. It, it, it sounded like they're all steel were somewhat phased out because he said, uh, you know, contact your dealers and see if they can still get them. Kind of thing. They, may, they make them not. in a very limited number. They don't right. have the manufacturing mm -hmm. capabilities that they used to. Right. Which is, I don't know, 
it, you know, Rock River, they talk about how they started all, off with handguns and they pretty much went completely into ARs. And now they're getting back into handguns a little bit. So it's pretty interesting. So uh, let's talk about the Taurus Model 85 View. I couldn't find this. Was it with all the other Tauruses? Yeah, it was right on the uh, outside edge of their booth. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I missed it. Um, so tell us about the Model 85. Very small, compact uh, revolver. The If you're looking at it, uh, the right side has a, I don't know, Clear plastic, I don't know what it's made out of, um, covering where you can actually see all of the internals and the actions working. It's a gimmick. I mean, I guess the size of the uh, frame and all that is newer. Um, I'm not familiar with the, the model. If the Model 85 was available prior to this and now they just made the view version or not, I forgot to ask that. Um, but like I said, it's it's a gimmick. Um, very tiny, very concealable for a revolver. So I'm not familiar with the Taurus revolvers either. So is there an 85 non-view and 85 view? You yeah. weren't listening, were you? No, he wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just I confirming that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if there's an 85 non-view. You told us not to do any research before this. <laughs> you guys are trying to figure out what pizza to order. So, all right. Well, let's talk talk about the Caltech RDB, the based on M forty three designed bullpup. Wah wah wah. Um, we were disappointed we couldn't shoot at range, Dave. Disappointed we couldn't shoot at range, Dave. <laughs> disappointed the trigger was broken when we went to go look at it. Well, they are just prototypes, to be fair. Disappointed to hear the MSRP of $3,000. Yeah, because how much is a Tavor? Uh, two. Under two, I think, is usually really. I, mm -hmm. I, I thought yeah, you could get like a Tavor 17. for 15 yeah. maybe. No, no, I don't think 15 no, Eight, you can 18, get a, You can get a left-handed model for 17 <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I was in the Tavor booth today, and there was a guy standing there that say, telling a guy that he could order either a right-handed or a left-handed version. And well, I, I was going to ask him, really? There's a, di <laughs> there's a difference? You, you can. Really? Yeah, you can. There's no difference other than the fact that they manufacture it yeah. with, with it changed over. That's right. interesting. But for those of you that don't know, it's completely ambidextrous. So What is it, Jake? <laughs> well, it isn't completely because you have to change your ejection port. In the so it's not completely bolt. what? I mean, you have to take That's it apart. That's why they sell the left-handed model. I mean, that probably is why. So it's already ready to go. You don't have to pull it apart and swap the parts right. side to right. side. Right. They, they bring them off the line as right or left, but... If I wanted to, I could order a left and make it a right. We really got off the right the Caltech. <laughs> so it's yeah, we were talking about the Caltech here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were done. I mean, that's a, we weren't able to shoot it. It was broken in the display. Uh, well, well, it's interesting because the Caltech, you can take it apart and move the charging handle to either the right or the left, and it ejects downward, so you don't have to you know change the ejection port. Well, what do you think of it, Jake? Because you got to hold it. I filmed you holding it. That was about it. That's as close to it as I got. Well, it it's um, no, no. Me and you went by, and you got a little bit closer. They just wouldn't let us shoot it. That's right. Because yeah. it had fifteen hundred rounds through it. Oh, no, that was a sub two thousand. But they weren't. They oh, didn't have it at the right. range day. But I just Caltech didn't. I mean. Uh, what, they, always, they turned your way at range time? Yeah, Caltech yeah. didn't win me over at all uh, during SHOT Show 2014 with just customer service aspects and all that. But side note, since we are talking about Caltech, did you guys, anybody get a chance to see that uh, Red Jacket was making that suppressor for the KSG? Mm -mm. I'm just curious why a company would make a suppressor for, well, anyway, Red Jacket designed a suppressor for the KSG, and I'm wondering why a company would make uh, a suppressor for an individual firearm, especially a Keltec. Any thoughts on that from the audience? Why are you so surprised? I'm just saying, talk about a niche market like suppressor, and then for like 
KSG has mixed review the mixed reviews on the KSG, let alone Caltech. If you can even find it. Yeah, if you can find a KSG is what Hank said. But I mean, I just I don't know. And is that the? Th I mean, is there a suppressor for other kinds of shotguns, or is that the first suppressor for a shotgun? No, they make uh, for Segas. Oh, okay. Well, that, that makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that Red Jacket would sp spend time and money to make a, a suppressor for a KSG. Cool. Sure. I want. I really want to like a KSG. I know. We're... Isn't that kind of what Red Jacket does? A bunch of crazy stuff. True. Yeah. You know, that no and, one really buys. And they're the kind I, of shop that could just make a one-off if they wanted to. That's you know? true. But I'm not. A, I mean, I like the KSG, but. I just didn't have a great experience with Keltec this weekend. And my feelings are hurt. I would like an apology letter. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about they, the... They can send it to Remington <laughs> via Remington, and then they can both sign it. Send it to us. We didn't even put the R51 in this top 20 list, did we? Yes. It's, yeah. it's in number 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, yeah, we should put that in. The Terran Tactical, PMAG, and Glock magazines. Uh, I thought this was pretty cool, Hank. You you uh, basically tackled Taron and uh, had him uh, show you on the show floor his... Right? It was you. His it was Hank. Yeah, I don't know if I almost tackled him, but... I think Taron was tackling Hank. Yes. And then um, they so it's, wrestled. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a uh, base pad for magazines for the PMAG, PMAG Gen 3 and uh, for Glock magazines. Easier to clean, adds a little bit of uh, drop weight for three gunners uh, for quicker mag changes. Capacity to both of those mags as well, too. I want to say a 30 round, take, he takes it to a 36 round mag. And I, for, I forget. Well, in the video, at least from what I remember, in the video, he's talking about a 40 mag. He does. He does both. Bag. He talks about both. Oh, okay. Depending on what you want to use it for. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember the forty. But the spring's different. Yes, it is. You did pay attention to the video. Nice. I know. Not not on the P mag though. And the pins are yeah. the same between the two magazines. Right. So basically, the, the spring's different in the windowed. Did you say this, Hank? As well. So basically, they it replaces the base plate of the magazine. Yes. He doesn't supply a different spring for the window. It is a different spring. Yes. But he doesn't supply that different spring. Yes. I Correct. think it's for the M and P mags. Yes. That he talked about last. That he, they put a Terran Tactical, Tactical provides a different spring for it. But they're very innovative. I love how they're very easy. You just pull a little pin on the base pad, pull them out, and you're, you know, then you pull the magazine spring out. Very, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very easy to uh, upgrade and clean. Yep. So, cool stuff. Um, so, the Robinson XCR, now this isn't really new, but it is kind of one of those overlooked black rifles. I think the, uh, the firearm blog, yeah, the firearm blog had a little write-up about it recently. Um, it's one I always forget about. It's been around for years. Years and years, but I, I I forget about it. So who who checked that out? I did. So what'd you think? My name is Greg Bakken. Uh, I thought it was cool actually. So basically, I cover all things tactical. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh uh, no, it's it's cool. It comes with like um, basically it's it's a, p a piston driven seven six two. Uh, you know, basically off the uh, AK. Variant, but it's it's uh, bl a kind of a black rifle platform. It looks a lot like the FN series, and I guess basically the FN scars. Um, basically, I, he said that he would. They I read interviewed him while I videoed, so I was just catching parts of it. But super easy to disassemble. You could pull the barrel off in like less than a minute with just like one screw. Uh, you can pull the the whole piston system out and clean it too. The, and I think it has an adjustable gas. Uh, tube as well, and uh, they make all sorts of versions. You get a full auto, uh, semi. They even make a California variant, variant, and then they also has the foldable stock uh, and a kind of the side charging handle. Uh, just I just thought it was unique. I think it's really cool. And he said that 
uh, just basically most people really like that rifle because he feels that it's more ergonomical than what a you would consider a normal uh, M4 rifle, as well as he thinks they're more uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More uh, reliable. But I don't know. There's some. I was looking at them before the show and YouTube videos and stuff. And there's like pictures of guys coming like in a wetsuit, sitting in the lake, popping up out of the water, shooting it and stuff. And seemed pretty cool. I don't know. I'd like to get one, but I think the cheapest one's like around two grand or something. So who knows? That's right. tactical. So they're they're on par with a lot of the other piston. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But they just seem, I don't know, they seem really cool. And especially with how you could change out the barrel and stuff, like, super fast. And and they're just a compact setup. I don't know. I just liked them. To drain the water when you pop them off. Yep. All right, the Rhino Arms 12-gauge and 308 all-in-one. Well, it's not really an all-in-one. Wow, that's what I saw. It's like an all-in-two uppers. All-in-two. <laughs> No, so yeah, so these guys made they make a uh, 308, uh, basically that you can swap out the upper for a 12 gauge upper, uh, which is I think is pretty awesome. Uh, so you could basically, you know, you could go out to the range and shoot your 308 around, and then swap the uppers and have a semi-automatic shotgun on top as well on the black rifle platform. And uh, this, is, this is a cool video that'll be posted on our YouTube channel fairly soon about it. Sweet, awesome. Um, so how? So it's like separate, completely separate uppers. Yeah, as far as I know, yes, I, I'm pretty sure. They didn't show you. In the no, video. they I, see. The problem is, I video read interviewing, and then I get distracted and like watching the video and not paying attention, so I only catch clips of it. But it was just really cool the design and the the upper. I mean, just because it's, I don't know. I just thought it was unique, you know, and kind of innovative. To be able to have that, but because uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm all about being in California and stuff. It's I really like when you can swap uppers on stuff and have a completely different gun versus having to go out and buy a whole new rifle and go through the whole buying process in California. You guys have any thoughts on that gun? I wasn't I didn't privileged see enough to go see it. You guys need to get out more. We do. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the integrally suppressed monolithic AR-15 by who's this by? Uh, Houston Armory. Houston Armory. I've never heard of these guys before. They're out of Houston. <laughs> and they're an armory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I to, uh, I'd never heard of them either. Uh, again, this was one of those things. Reed and I were running around in the uh, kind of the law enforcement area, and these guys have basically it's a it's. Can we use the word monolithic? I don't know. It's a one piece. Uh, handguard that's also a suppressor so it's like a full length and you can get it any length you want uh, you know whatever they want you could do a 14 and a half you know 16 and a half a 12 or whatever uh, but basically and they can do it in any caliber that you want as well they had a, everything from you know a 556 uh, they had a 308 and they had a 50 Beowulf which was awesome so check out that 50 Beowulf and that was actually one of the guys that works there his personal rifle was a 50 Bay Wolf, and he uses a 308 for hog hunting. He says he can shoot out the, you know, he takes his his suppressor out there, so suppress 308 out there with the the rifle, and you know, and does uh, hog hunting in 250 yards, no big deal at all. And uh, uh, it was a cool. It's cool because most people, the first question they have for it is, well, how do you clean it? You know, because you're gonna have to disassemble the whole uh, upper hand guard to clean it and everything. Well, they said you don't need to clean it. They say that it actually gets quieter uh, the dirtier it gets. Uh, so they said they uh, one of their old their newest rifles they have their testing they said it's about a, a complete decibel quieter than when you get a brand new one. Uh, so you basically you season the silencer or the suppressor. Uh, and they said that they have a uh, uh, an instructor that's been testing it for him shooting 600 rounds a week through it and he's been doing it for about a year and a half and they haven't had any issues with it. So Pretty cool. I'll never get one in California, unfortunately, but uh, I'd love to get my hands on one. I know Reed is pretty interested and excited about them as well. I think there were a couple of vendors at Range Day that subscribed to that quieter as it gets dirtier thing. Because a couple of vendors, you couldn't use them anymore. Yeah, he they stopped working. They got so quiet because they were so dirty. <laughs> yeah, well, he said that they disassembled the one 
from their instructor, and they said that it didn't need cleaning. He said the baffles begin to wear out, but then they can rebuild it for you, so it's not a big deal. But he said as far as cleaning, he said they haven't had any any issues with it. So it's kind of unique looking because it basically looks like a giant tube, you know, and then the end of the barrel so, is just a flat. So how often do the baffles wear out? Uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, he, according to him, you know, that rifles had like 20,000 rounds through it. And the baffle, baffles are still going strong. He said they're just are you can see wear on them. So that's pretty know. impressive. Yeah, he's he said at least if you buy a 308 version, he said you'd run out of money before you'd wear out the baffles. Yeah, or wear out a barrel. Yeah, yeah, true. So yeah. very cool. I have to keep an eye on them. Houston Armory. Yep. In Houston, Texas. Is that Houston? Te- you know, there are other Houstons. Where? There are. Where? So short. Um, so <laughs> Seekins <laughs> Precision Billet Upper. So these, these aren't new either. but No, uh, they're not new. But what's new about Seekins, unfortunately we're using all my suggestions right, right now, but Seekins is coming out with a whole new product line of everything. And I really like Seekins Billet uh, Lowers and Uppers, but they're also coming out with their new handguard and a new barrel. That's done by Seekins. So they're going to be coming to the market. Uh, new this year with all sorts of AR parts that people should keep an eye on because I don't know I really like the they just kind of have a clean look to me and a really tight fit and uh, the only reason I bring them up is because I've t- I've talked to several people over the last couple of weeks that have never heard of Seekins Precision so hmm. I just thought I'd bring it up and they had a tiny booth at Shot Show I had to talk to the guy out in the alley or in the aisle felt like the alley <laughs> people bumping into me knocking <laughs> me over that happens in the alley it does. All right, the Alzetta Alpha Light. Now, this this is something I'm pretty excited about. I did a little video that's going to be coming out. On you mean the, I did a little video? You just happen to be in the video. I, well, that would be me. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Greg and I shot a little video about the Alzetta Alpha Light with Dave over there at Alzetta. So the um, Alpha is their one cell size. So this is like the perfect little size for pocket carry. And I'm really excited. He also said that they're coming out with a belt clip uh, attachment now. So that, And now that's a universal belt attachment, right? Yeah, you can use it on any of them because their lights are all modular. So you can use the bezels on any of their lights. So And you can use that belt clip on any belt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike, that's that's true. You can use that belt clip on any other any belt. <laughs> What uh is what what size battery does that little light run on? Was it a CR one two three? Yeah, it's a single CR one two three. And you know the cool thing about Alzada is they're completely a hundred percent made in the U.S. Even the batteries and even the, the steel and everything, the yeah. aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. And what was that uh, the lens that they had there today? Remember how or the lens? Remember how thick it was? Do you remember any details about that lens? Oh, what was that? Acrylic? Yeah, I think that's what they it was. Said, he said it was what, Shark Tank? Uh, yeah, the same stuff they used to make Shark Tanks. Yeah, so it's like a solid lens. It's, it's You're you know, not going to break it, basically. Yeah, but you pick it up, and it, you know it's so light, it doesn't seem like it's solid. But I, I just yeah. want to know, like, what is that supposed to tell us? Is a Shark Tank more sturdy than like a tank they keep dolphins in? Yes. I hope so. No. That's how the, isn't that how the shark needle happened? I, I, I think that's just a marketing scheme. Nobody, but, would, nobody would use it if they knew if it was like a dolphin tank material. Well, if Elzetta, you're listening, you could send me the flashlight and not Mike. <laughs> no. <laughs> a dolphin tank? <laughs> Tanks hold water. It doesn't matter what's I, in it. Either I have, way. I have it a feeling a, neither of you are getting <laughs> it was a, to you. It was a goldfish tank uh, <laughs> lens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the other things that was cool, uh, I don't know if, if any of you listeners out there, friends of ours, have watched the uh, uh, LZ videos where they use the flashlight to nail the, uh, or hammer a piece of nail in. Uh, or, I know, <laughs> nail a piece of hammer in. <laughs> <laughs> it got me distracted. Tink, tink, tink. It's pointing at the computer screen. But, uh, no, yeah, they, they use the flashlight to na- uh, hammer in a, a nail. And they, they had that flashlight there, and we got to use it and turn it on, which was kind of cool. And That was cool. The guy's been using it. I mean, that thing is beat to crap, but it still functions yeah, and, and it, works just fine. It really does. 
Yeah. So. No, good stuff all the way around. And they have a new, uh, you know, I don't have the info in front of me. I can't remember. But you brought up the lens, and they have a new lens that disperses the beam pattern differently. So they're, they're one beam. Or one lens is good for a, a wide pattern. Flood is what they a, referred to. A flood. And Made out of a stingray tank <laughs> plastic. No, he said it was squid. Squid spray. Either. <laughs> you guys are so amazing. This is what happens when you do a podcast from Las Vegas. So. And, you, and you're running on you know four back-to-back days of three and four hours of sleep yeah. each day. And, and lots of pizza. No wings, though. No. You know, I, I just will say one thing, though. Jake and I were going to go over and interview another flashlight company, and it just I just knew that they weren't going to hold up to Elzetta, and so we didn't even, I didn't personally bother to go back to that flashlight company because it's like, I don't really want to hear about other flashlights unless it's, like, I mean, yes, there's other flashlights out there that are different than Elzetta that fit a different, you know, need in your life, but when it comes to like an everyday carry flashlight, I don't think you can beat an Elzetta. Sort of. I mean, they're expensive, so that could be the reason not to. But. But they will last forever. But they will last forever, and you can disassemble them underwater and hammer things and throw them out of a helicopter. Yeah, I'm. Or, I'm, or a Glock plane. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, a Glock has a plane here at the airport. A, a private Hank, Hank has pointed it out every time we pass it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, very cool. Alzada Alpha Light. So let's move on. Rock River Arms LAR 47. So is this their AK magazine fed 762 by 39? Yes, it is. So based on the uh, AR 15 platform, however, like you said, it takes a uh, AK magazine 762 by 39. Um, Wait, so th- does PMAG make a AK magazine? I th- didn't they just come out with one? Yeah, I thought so. At least so. Now, this says it works with most AK mags, so I don't know if the PMAG counts for that. It was a um, polymer mag that, that they did have in it. Oh, really? They had yeah. a poly mag in it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look at the video. Well, you'll see a poly mag in it. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's cool. I think it's cool too. I mean, I, this rifle because what's the what did they say the MSRP was on it? I think it's they said right under a thousand, right? Right, right at a yeah. thousand. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a very cool rifle. Yeah, I, I was shocked when he told us the MSRP on it. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a lot higher than that. Like it's a it's a right because can you run any can you run a normal AR-15 handguard on it? Yeah, it, it, it looked like it, it comes with a standard. Yeah, kind of yeah the upper is. Standard. Yeah. It's just that lower with the uh, magwell. Oh, well, it's not change. standard. The whole thing is 7.62, but well, and what's the standard g- for 7.62? I mean, AR. How's the? Is it the gas system of an AR-15? Not. Like the? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I think so. I for totally didn't get a chance to look at it. I didn't so like it. You know, I, picked, I picked it up and uh, the sales rep came up and I put it back down, so I didn't really look at it close. I I took the mag in and out and played with that, and it seemed to work. As far as, you know, rocking an AK mag, it seemed to work just fine. Hmm. I don't know. It's one I'd like to get my hands on along. To shoot cheap ammo or why? I don't, I don't find it appealing, personally. I think just to shoot that 7.62 round, yeah, it's cheap ammo, and it's just a little different. Yeah, but we're not talking unique. about what we like. We're talking about what's the buzz. No, what, what did I title up? So the Best of Shot Show 2014 is what I titled it. No, but seriously, though, I think it'd be just like a fun unique rifle to have because it's not something that everyone's going to have that you show up with and I mean you sh- show up shooting 7.62 it can be cheap you know cheaper than going and buying your 5.56 ammo right. and I don't know just something unique you, you just like being that guy at the range that has that unique thing that everyone comes over and that looks guy. at well maybe that's I guess why I want a 50 Beowulf <laughs> although I will say Rock River Arms had a very nice 458 SOCOM rifle yes they did mm-hmm. with the beast the beast on the yeah, end of it. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's talk about the Bo- 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 Boberg. Boberg. The Boberg XR9. All right, you go first, Hank. Tell me your impressions of it. Um, you know, I, I first found out about uh, Boberg probably six months ago. I was a little intrigued about them, reading some of the discussion boards about them. Um, the Boberg users 
are have the, they're like a cult following. Man, these people love this design of this pistol. It's a very compact um, nine millimeter. Sounds like uh, we didn't have a chance to shoot it. Unfortunately, Boberg wasn't at uh, range day. Were they not but, actually there, or did we just miss them? No, so, they weren't. They were not okay. there. They were not uh, you there. were there longer than I was. Yeah. Um, so they say that the uh, uh, nine millimeter recoils, making it feel more like a thirty-eight. Uh, we were able to see the XR forty-five. It's a prototype right now. Um, they swear that it has the recoil of a nine millimeter. Uh, very compact. Uh, 3.8 inch barrel, I believe. Maybe. Yeah. No, on the website here, it's saying 4.2 inch. Um, yeah, because it has an overall length of about uh, you know six inches, 5.95, and the idea is that you can get a lot longer barrel in the same overall length of a pistol. Exactly. When I was there, I actually referred to it of as the uh, bullpup of handguns, just the way that uh, the action set back further on it. Um, and, I and think if you, that's you how see, they refer it. Well, yeah. it, she, they, they didn't, but they actually brought us over a uh, article that somebody else had referred to it as the same thing. Because I know so, we, we talked about it on This Week in Guns, and I think that's what the article was titled. Okay. Yeah. But uh, So what what did you think about it? I, I like it. Um, I mean, it had a very nice trigger pull on it. Um, the machining on the gun is nothing but quality. Uh, the concealability of it seems fantastic as well, too. Uh, it's, it's one of those that I would really be eager in uh, shooting. Did you ask them about the price point? Yeah, the price points are around uh, yeah. 4 50 I want to say. Is that no. what they told you? No, they're expensive. Yeah, they're like 1200 the, bucks. Yeah, the... Yeah. The forty-five was. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah. That's what I meant. You're right. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. I was thinking. I was completely picturing a, a different gun at that price point. Um, no, you're right. They are expensive. They're. Uh, I want to say a thousand forty-five for the cheapest, up to fourteen hundred um, for the most expensive version in the uh, nine millimeter, and then uh, the forty-five since it's still, it still hasn't hit the market yet. Um, they don't know about the price point, but obviously it'll be a little bit more than the nine. I, I was actually really I didn't know that the, the forty five that he handed me was a prototype. I didn't know that. And yeah. I picked it up off the table and um made a face at it, me when he pulled the trigger. He was like on his way over, I was like, Try this trigger. This sucks. <laughs> quick quick try this trigger, it's horrible. <laughs> But he redeemed himself. He wasn't there for that part of the conversation. And uh, when he was running through it with us and everything, he's like, just ignore the trigger. Ignore the trigger because that's not what it will feel like. It's just a prototype. I, I, I asked him about the ammo, like if you have to use or did you? special ammo. And they said, yeah, you have to use ammo that has a tighter crimp. You know. Um, and then, well, go ahead. I was just going to say, because the... The way this thing feeds is you you put your ammo into the magazine um, backwards almost than you, you than put, you, you put it in the woods. Not not backwards, but your your magazine is, is backwards. Back. Right. And so the you push you push, push the bullet in instead of backing it in, and instead of it coming out the front of the magazine, it gets pulled out the back and lifted up. It gets pulled out butt first. Yeah. Correct. Pull, pulled up by the rim, there, and then right there's a mechanism in. that pulls it up. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And and that's why the whole crimping issue was. What what ammo is more crimped than other ammo? Well, I I think some isn't uh, some factory nine isn't crimped at all. Oh. Um. But uh, okay, so what, would you buy it, Mike? No, I, it's too expensive for me. I if mean, it wasn't that expensive. If it was five, six hundred. Would you buy it? I wouldn't buy it without trying it first. I mean, that's. I mean, it's definitely different. You hold it, and it has a different balance in your hands. Um, that would probably take some getting used to, but. Um, I I just don't know. I don't know that I would personally. I, for me, that's too much of a change. 
you know, I'm, I'm not used to that. And I don't know if I'm willing to buy something where I have to buy special ammo for it. That's just me. And I mean, I mean, I the only selling point for me, at least, would be the fact that you can get a shorter gun with a longer barrel. Well, not a longer, but a shorter a shorter gun without uh, losing barrel length. Um, so be, besides, for me, besides uh, possibly having it um, take your ammo apart for you without firing it, um, I'm really leery of uh, how tight the tolerances are. He, he was saying that because of the way it feeds the ammo, the tolerances in the chamber are, are, can be much tighter than most of any other handgun in the same class. Hmm. So that well, right there is going to limit your ammo even more. And they they stated that a lot of people, when they rack the slide, they'll end up jamming the gun because they don't pull it back all the way. It'll, it kind of feels, you rack the slide and it, feels like it's gone back all the way, but then there's actually a little bit more that you have to get it to go. And that's when it actually, the feed ramp kicks in and everything and pulls that bullet and then uh, puts it into battery. It, yeah. Um, and the, the other deal breaker for me is that it doesn't hold back on the last, on an empty chamber. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any kind of hold back. Right, you know, no it, no slide lock at all. So, um, you know, for for um, it seems like for who they're marketing it towards, because he talked to me about uh, a lot on how it's so much easier to slide, uh, uh, rack the slide on this, and uh, how it's so good for women. Yeah, <laughs> and see, his... and, and I'm at the same time I'm thinking, well, I I don't know that. So you're you're. Talking about you know because you know if, if a lady is uh, you know or a man or anyone is taught how to rack a slide they can rack a slide on most any gun and right that's what the that's what the <laughs> wife said to wait me. a second we got to talk about that strike two or strike one double no we talked about that last year that thing that takes a real person to rack the that slide <laughs> that takes about three people to rack the slide on the uh, Arsenal Arms uh, or a behemoth double, yeah nineteen eleven. <laughs> No, that his Why? wife actually said the complete opposite, that that people have a hard time uh, racking that thing. But she was a very petite woman, well, and maybe she had a hard time with it. Well, with the Remember that guide spring XR9. in there, though, that makes it very yes. easy. It is very easy to rack. It's very smooth, but the mistake that people make is that they feel that tension and they stop that initial one. They forget that they have to go one step further get over that hump, and that's why people in the beginning, okay. when they're not used to it, have a difficult okay. time. Remember that thing she was she pulled out the the guide uh, rod and spring in there and said you can actually use the gun without it, but this helps. It's completely independent, and that's what makes the racking action yeah, so smooth. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. She did say that. Um, yeah, she must have been just talking about that, that last part of this part. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that he pointed out to us was the rifling in the barrel um because this guy designed it um mr boberg I, I forget what mr boberg i forget what he called it but it doesn't it doesn't just start off um at the, the twist rate at the at the start is not the twist rate at the muzzle it starts off straight and it is a gradual turn so he 80 percent of the way it's straight, and then at the very end, it goes gradual to a small twist. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't immediately start spinning, and he yeah, the he, he claims pressure that build up and yeah, yeah, they they claim that they stuff. can get no they Sciency claim stuff. that they can get like every last amount of possible pressure velocity out of your round. By the way, this pistol is designed. Yeah, yeah, but. I'm not not sold on it. I, I, I wish they would have had the, to shoot at range day. Maybe that would have sold me on it. I don't know. I think it's cool and innovative, but you're right. Not being able to lock the slide back to me is a concern. Yeah, it's a deal breaker for me. So tracking point, what do you guys think? You 
you're going to sign up, get a twenty-five thousand dollar Remington. You know, if if they yeah. were able to deliver it faster. Oh, you, you've got the money in hand. Yeah. They just can't deliver it. Yeah, fast. exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. there's a waiting list of a hundred people plus right now, and so that's just poor customer service. Yeah. Do you think when I want I I want to be able to get it delivered by an Amazon drone in the next forty eight hours if I order it right now? You know, then later you could shoot the Amazon drone down. <laughs> that's right. Hey, do you think the people on the waiting list are people that have shot it, or do you think there's people on the waiting list that have not shot it? Oh, absolutely. There's people that have not shot it. You think so? Yeah. Because did you think it was super impressive before you shot it? Or did shooting it... I thought I thought the concept of it was impressive. $20,000 impressive? No. But after Just shooting it, do you think it's worth it? Technologically impressive. Yeah. I mean, it does something that no other firearm does out there. Um, I got to shoot... Uh, 300 wind mag through it uh, three times uh, right at a thousand yards and uh, I hit every time it's uh, I mean it's it's amazing piece of software and all the technology that goes into it and the gyroscopes and uh, figuring out like 20 different uh, elements that are going on uh, while while you're using the system uh, and I, I think it's like 500 times a second. It's it's looking at those 28 different elements and uh, everything except for wind movement because they haven't figured out how to do that yet, but they're still working on it. Um, so if I can shoot a thousand yards three times and hit it, not have any problems, I mean that's pretty. Then anybody pretty, could shoot a thousand. Yards. Absolutely, <laughs> even you. Yep. So when do you think uh, the 28th element will movie will come out? Right? I have no idea what you're referring to. Hank, you've lost all sense of humor. I lost my mind an hour ago. I know. Yeah, it's not day. okay for me to stand up, but it's okay for him to stand <laughs> up. He mutes his <laughs> mic when he stands up. All right. all right, so next we move over to the Cry 612. Uh, pretty innovative, uh, built around uh, the concept of having a shotgun built into your AR um, for entry, uh, like in a SWAT scenario. Um, the problem that they saw was that the entry man would have to breach a door with a shotgun, then sling it over his shoulder, then grab his primary rifle, and uh, so... They are able to do away with this with the 612. It comes in its own primary platform. Sorry, wrong picture. Um, and then you can detach it from that and you can put it on a Picatinny rail underneath your AR and um, without having to take your trigger finger off your primary trigger, going up on the foregrip, it has its own independent trigger for the 12 gauge and uh, it's all in one so how many rounds does that hold then it holds six, six. that's really it's six huh yeah mm -hmm. all under the barrel it. yep and this nobody else can see while we're talking about this but the <laughs> cylinder the cylinder drops out and then you can have a spare one on you if you need to do more yeah I mean different ammo in each one it's like a magazine change yeah I mean that's pretty uh, cool yeah the cylinder is a carbon fiber um, the the whole frame of the cylinder is carbon fiber. It's not like a like a wrap or anything like that. It's the whole thing's carbon fiber except for the the sleeves. Right. Uh, yeah. So and it's it's double action only. Double action only. Um, and it, it and it so you can have it. He was kind of talking to us about it, but was a little bit distracted as, as well, too, because there was so much buzz at the booth about it um, that he was apologizing for. But I don't know, Mike, if you caught it when he was talking about the overall barrel length of your primary weapon, and but with this attached to it, you can get more length out of it so that it's... They, 
Yeah, I think they, they make a longer one so that your uh, the overall length of the rifle um, combined with the the length of the barrel because the cylinders count as part of the barrel length. Right. Um, it's a non NFA item. Right. Hey, so you said it attaches by on the Picatinny rails? Yeah, underneath. Mm -hmm. Is that are, are they strong enough to be holding the shotgun? I'm just wondering. Yeah, the whole entire length of it is all attached. So to when the you Picatinny. purchase this, then it comes with the Picatinny rail, like the whole rail, upper rail, or is that a, just you attach it to your existing? You attach rail. it to your existing rail. Interesting. So I guess you'd have to make sure you have a good solid rail that's mounted. Correct. Because mm -hmm. I don't think the it, rail that I currently have would hold it. It's fairly heavy. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, weighing in just over three and a half pounds um, as the prototype version, uh, but the next version they said they've uh, been able to shave off about a half a pound. You guys know what the MSRP is on those? No, they. I don't think they even know. They, yeah. <clears throat> um, Hank, did you already say that they they make the standalone? Chassis to where you can just take it out and add it to the chassis and have your own standalone unit. Yes. Okay. It's pretty cool looking. They're yeah. they're uh, they're going to release next year, I think, only to law fourth, enforcement. Fourth quarter of 2013. Really, only end of law this year. Starting starting with LE, and then um, after that launch, sometime next year, they'll go into their commercial launch. I don't know what. What does ATF classify something like that? Is that a destructive device? Because like a rotary, sh regular rotary shotgun are classified as destructive devices. I don't know. We really? We didn't discuss that. Aren't they? Like I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel like this would be any an issue of anything if it's a shotgun. But I guess technically it's a short-barreled shotgun. So I guess that could be an issue. I don't know though. Well, I mean, there's things. There, what's that other company that makes a uh, well, it's basically basically an 870 that you put under your put on your rail. Uh, I think I is it, it's a single shot, right? Might be. I don't remember. I, don't I, I think some of these are classified as destructive devices. I mean, LE and, long, uh, and uh, military can have them, but I don't know that civilians would be able to have the Cry Six. Hmm. Um, Been a long day. We're very tired. All right, and you wouldn't let us do research. No. <laughs> uh, slide fire solutions. So someone had to go burn through a bunch of ammo. Jeez, Hank. Me. Th thanks for the ammo run. Absolutely. It's always fun running through. So what'd you do at the slide fire fun. booth on uh, Range Day? So um, two different products of theirs. Uh, their slide fire platform uh, for your AR-15. Uh, it's basically their the bump stock principle uh, added on with uh, removing your stock. Uh, I think it's around 350 or so price point. But uh, using the bump fire technique allows you to uh, simulate and feel as close as possible to having a full auto weapon. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, first first mag for me, 30 rounds. I probably put three or four of them on steel <laughs> once you got, you know, used to it. Figured <laughs> out, okay, this is what it's going to feel like. And then uh, the next one, I think I probably put about 25 of those 30 on steel. And uh, so I mean, once you get accustomed to it, you know exactly what to expect. Uh, you know, you're, you're, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? You know, Mike, what? we're all tired here. <laughs> we don't need your antics right now. Um, so... Impressive. It was neat. And so then, yeah, but explain explain a little bit more about so the, the, the how it works. Okay, so in you're basically pulling forward on the fore end of the gun, and that is bringing the trigger up to your trigger finger, 
which is all the way through the trigger housing, resting on another piece of the plastic, which is part of the stock. Sorry, the sled. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was most interested in. Yeah, the, the, okay. the sled. Because I think that's okay. So then the, the second, they, they the second had on item that they had right was called their sled, um, the slide fire sled. Uh, it's a prototype right now. They're trying to gauge uh, market need, market use for it. Uh, but essentially, it's taking the AR-15 platform, turning it upside down so that your magazine is sticking up in the air, and it's resting on a platform that as you push on the platform, it's going to ha have a bar through the trigger housing, and once you start shooting the gun, then the back pressure is going to start rocking it back and forth, just like the um, bump fire principle of their other ones. But um, it reminds me of the old... Uh, What's the two grip? Uh, M, M1? Like a mounted <laughs> machine gun? Yeah, like a mounted machine gun. You need to stop me. Yes, I, you I'm definitely not, yeah, need to why, stop me. Well, I'm riding Hanks up and down every time he talks this whole episode. So. Why are you riding well, Hanks hate, up and down? <laughs> I mean, let, stand up, don't stand up. Sit down, don't sit down. You know, don't quit. Don't sit, don't don't sit don't back quit. in your chair. Why are you leaning into the mic? I mean, just. No, but you're right. You know, it looks like it's like that double handed machine gun. Yeah. When it's upside down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool concept. It, it was a lot of fun. I, I don't know what the. Um, real use would be for it, other than to, you know, have it be a. Uh, um, there is no real use for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a range it's toy. Cool. It's a range toy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to burn my own ammo. What about what about the Chris Vector? Chris Vector. Well, somebody else here shot the Chris Vector, right? Yeah. You shot the Chris yeah. Vector. I'm gonna let you talk about it. So. That thing was that thing was a lot of fun. Um, really, uh, really interesting. They the way they make this thing is the the bolt actually moves down, um, down into the rifle itself, and then it cycles like that. So the cycle is a little bit shorter, um, and they only have them in forty five right now. Uh, I think they have plans on getting them in nine, but they don't do that yet. Uh, but the ones they had there, um, they had uh, two two round burst and full auto. Um, then they had one that was suppressed, um, and they were semi auto too. And they were semi auto too, correct. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, that was my first time shooting a full auto, so um, they were heavy. They were, which is kind of surprising to me. Yeah, they were, and they were just they were a little different to operate. Um, yes, they were, because you know what was weird about them that I didn't like. Sorry to cut you off, Mike. Oh, go ahead. But when you you had to like rack, you know, you grab the handle on the side, the left hand side of the of the of the uh, upper area of the rifle and you rack the slide back but then you had to like manipulate you your hand the slide. or sorry rack the uh, <laughs> bolt back pull the bolt back and then you had to like manipulate the bolt lock you know to keep it locked back mm -hmm. did you do that I mean it was like funky yeah like, it wasn't like I don't know it wasn't easy I, I wouldn't say it's easy I guess on an AR-15 platform either but it was like awkward mm -hmm. to, to be able to use the lock the bolt lock back yeah. But anyway, whatever. But yeah, and you also you when you when you are finished with your magazine, you can just throw another one in and keep on going. Yeah. There's nothing else you have to do, so that was kind of cool. Um, okay. although they only gave us like 12 rounds, so you put it in full auto. Was... <laughs> yeah. What kind of yeah. magazine did? Were they what kind of magazines were they that they took? Are they Chris Vector magazines or are they? They're that's, not, a, that's actually a good question. They're not Glock I, magazines, were they? I, I don't think so. They were like big magazines, but yeah, that, that's a good question. 
Greg. I, I don't know. Um, so uh, Chris also had a Sphinx. A Sphinx? <laughs> yes, a Sphinx. A Sphinx. <laughs> still there. Right there, poof. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so this is an import. Where where's this imported from? Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland. Sorry. Yeah, I, I got an opportunity to fire it, and it's um, <laughs> this thing MSRP's. If I remember right, it was around the thirteen hundred dollar range, and um, it was a very smooth firing pistol. Um, the the thing that I really liked about it were the grips on it. And it, it comes with uh, comes with three uh, interchangeable grips, three different size options, and the ones they had there were the medium size, um, and it's it's not like interchangeable back straps. It's the whole, not the front, but from from the front of the side all the way around to the other side. Changes the girth as well. Yeah, yeah, it changes the whole width of of the whole grip. So it was it was very comfortable. Um, and the trigger on it was a very impressive too. So, um, I, I hadn't even heard of them before. I was not familiar with Sphinx at all, but um, I'm I'm sold on them now. I would I'd love to get my hands on one. Um, so wait, is the Sphinx? Uh, that's from Switzerland, but the the Vector is not. They both are. Oh, they both are. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got it. Sorry. So that was that was a lot of fun to be introduced to that, um, and then um, the other thing that I think was getting a lot of buzz was the Desert Tech MDR, uh, the I think it's Micro Dynamic Rifle, and it's a it's another bullpup. You know, I think the the, the main competition for them would be the Tavor, and there's a link to it in the show notes, but. Um, a very very similar looking to the Tavor. Uh, now this one is it has the capability to interchange to five different calibers that all share the, sh share the same chassis. Um, and I th they don't even have it available yet. It's not going to be available until next year. Um, I was talking to a guy that asked them about their prices because I didn't, I didn't get the chance to do that. But they, it's apparently it, the same price as buying a new rifle if you want to go through the conversion kits to, to use another cal caliber with it. So really, yeah. So I, that's lame. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to change, but right now, I mean. It's cool to have that capability, I guess, but I just don't. I, I wonder, you know, how many of these conversion kits are they are they going to sell? You know, yeah. huh? So it's interesting. But, Did you get a chance to hold that rifle? No, I didn't. Just, um, you just got to gaze at it. I got to gaze at it. Yeah. Huh. It does look a so, lot like a Tavor, just with a trigger guard instead of a hand guard. Yeah, and I and I asked the. I asked the guy at their booth what the difference was between Desert Tactical and Desert Tech, and there's no difference. He said they're just <laughs> rebranding. So, because I, because I was that article that we covered uh, last week was about Desert Tactical, and they're the the same company that turned down that um, that big offer from Pakistan to get their rifles. Um, I asked him, and he said they're just rebranding. Yeah, From that, Desert Tactical to Desert Tactical. Yeah, that, that was all over the news a couple weeks ago. I didn't include it in WIG because I'm like, you know, what's the difference? Who cares? Um, so, this one I find interesting. It, they're saying you can switch it from 223 to a you know, bigger caliber like 308 or 762. Or, um, 6.8 and 300 blackout. Yeah, which th those two are more on the 223 line, 556. Five, Line of things. Now the Tavor. What's the biggest caliber they're saying you can switch to on the Tavor? Well, it's a 7.62 round, and they have a 9 mm 
Yeah, aren't, yeah. aren't all the Tavors 5 They're 5 They're 5 six. Six. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're 5 they're five, 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 six, five, 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 six, but they six. came out with their new conversion this year to make them a 9 millimeter. No, right, but they don't go up any higher. No, no mm-hmm. I think that's it. So the, this yeah. is... Uh, More innovative, I guess you could say. Well, maybe for military applications, you're looking to be a little mm-hmm. bigger of a platform in the yeah, bullpup sure. area. Now, this article that says here... That around forever, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Israel, they have been. Um, so mid uh, 2015 is when uh, the Desert Tech uh, bullpup is slated to come out. So we'll see. That's uh, over another shot show away. So uh, maybe we can shoot it next year. Yeah. Be nice. But uh, okay. So the uh, Double Star SBR 7.5 inch. Uh, who put this yeah. one on? Yeah, this was this was actually the first thing I shot on range day, and uh, I was super impressed. Um, mainly because I didn't miss the target at 50 yards, <laughs> iron sights set with a seven and a half inch barrel. Seven and a half inch barrel shooting this, a pistol. This thing weighs five pounds. Um, that's impressive. Yeah, um, a lot of people were lined up <laughs> at this booth. Um, I went back a couple times because I liked it so much, and man, sure enough, I mean, they had to target out there at fifty yards and just dink, dink, dink every time, and then, and then you went and shot it, Greg, right? Yes, I did. And then Same came back story. and you're like, I didn't miss, I didn't miss one time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was impressed with my own shooting as well because you're right. It seems super accurate. Whoever sighted it in, sighted it, it, it in. <laughs> Did a really good job, but no, it, I I was really impressed with how light the rifle was. They made different versions of it as well. Not only did they have a seven and a half inch, I think they had a ten and a half inch, and then they had like a fourteen and a half. But mm-hmm. it's very very cool design and super lightweight, and they weren't having any blowback issues or anything with the design of the rifle. But uh, mm-hmm. I even went by later their booth later <laughs> <laughs> at the show to check it out again. Because it was a cool rifle. Yeah, they call it a Star 15. Yeah, and it was a star. One one of my return trips over to the booth was um, it actually wouldn't go completely into battery, and um, they they stripped it apart and sprayed it down and cleaned it up a little bit, and it it was fine. But I mean, those th- it had so many rounds going through it that day. Yeah, um, it wouldn't be fair to say. You know, put put any stock in that malfunction. But you want to talk about all the? Uh, are we done with the uh, double star? I mean, you stopped me while I was talking. About <laughs> it, <but> sure. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Don't let me stop I think you. Now. No, we're good. Closing thoughts, and you like <laughs> closing thoughts. You cut his closing off. But go ahead, Jake. What would you like to talk? I was going to say we could go on uh, quite a while about all the malfunctions we saw on Range Day. That's true. We could, like every like other that. booth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not not really, not. but but you could. I mean, it's it, it was kind of surprising to see all yeah. of the issues. And I mean, that, and you're right. There were lots of issues, and and I think it was because everything was getting shot so much. Like you just had, you know, twenty or thirty people in a line loading, you know, whatever six, seven rounds, or if they were in a rifle line, they could have been twenty rounds in a magazine. And they're just going one after another. And, I mean, I felt bad for all the guys loading the magazines all day because you literally had the low man on the totem pole with blue thumbs out there just stuffing magazines. But, I mean, it it seemed like every major company or, my, you know, minor company had something malfunctioning out there. Yeah. And well, which, I don't want to mention who this is because I don't want to kind of yeah, get laid on right, right now. No. But there, I did go to one booth where they, they had numerous problems early in the day we were th- we got there at eight and it was like eight thirty to nine when we got to their booth and they were having mm-hmm. some pretty big problems so I, I, yeah anyways i didn't have i didn't notice that uh, well except for one booth but i don't know if it's the same one or not but i just was surprised at some of the malfunctions that i faced but maybe sometimes you know i you when you fire any rifle you can help with the malfunctions because you don't know what you're doing, but I don't know. I think that might have been the case with one of the rifles that I was using, but 
Either way, I surprised the guy that was helping me with it by the malfunction that we had. <laughs> you made it do what? Well, I just, this rifle we shot, and then he cleared it and cleared it twice and then pulled the trigger, and the round still went off in it. So we were surprised that there was still a round in there. So, anyway. Your your boof staff had a ND. Yes, my boof staff did. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a safe ND. Well, thanks for listening, yeah. everybody, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> well, I, wait, we didn't talk about the R1. Oh, yeah, the R1, that will be our 20th. Um, fortunately, it wasn't there at range day. Apparently, even some of the Remington staff thought it was going to be there in range day. They said that they didn't know it wasn't there and that the, uh, who was it, that the marketing department didn't know or whatever and was upset about it when we were there, remember? Yeah. They mentioned that that the big wigs didn't know that it wasn't out there. But uh, mm. but then we also heard that they had a private event prior for the media, and they never planned on having it out there. There, there were a lot of different stories going around, yeah. depending on who you asked. Right. Well, we it, talked about the private event last weekend. Big. <laughs> yeah. Who got their hands on it, actually? Because I, I, I don't think I actually got my hand on it. I did. What did you guys yeah. think of it? I, I mean, without, so, without firing it. It seemed like uh, I'm. I'm really excited to be yeah. able to one day, but yeah, yeah, especially it. at that price point. What's the MSRP? It, it, on it? looks cool. The, the thing I noticed right off the bat was that it, it's, it's got the, um, the uni unique, uh, you know, locking. What is it? Locking lug action. I forget what it's called. I forget what they call it. Um, but you can really feel that action as you're racking it. It's almost like mm -hmm. it's a gun with a real dirty slide or something. Because mm -hmm. it's moving the, it's rotating the, uh, what, the chamber or the barrel or? I, oh, it's the barrel. Is it the barrel? I think so. No, I think it's the chamber. I don't know, I'm screwing this all up. <laughs> but it's, it's late. <laughs> yes, it is very late. <laughs> we refer to a previous episode that we were more, <laughs> had more sleep on. Um, all right, well, do you want to talk about the Arsenal Double 1911? Was that what do you think, Greg? You, you this is my older. first hands to get my or chance to get my hands on that, and I know you guys talked a lot about it last year, so I was excited to get my hands on it. But I was, uh, I could not get that slide back the first time I tried, and then Jake told me I needed to man up and rack that slide, and then I <laughs> finally got it. But it was, uh, it was definitely uh, interesting, and it was interesting that that was the same company that had the Arsenal Arms. They had the single strike shot. One. The strike one, that's it. The Sing, stri single shot. Wow. Well, that's true. I mean, <laughs> it was basically a single shot. But no, last year you guys talked about how the long, drawn out uh, reset. Reset, yeah. And uh, I couldn't, yeah, the first time I did the reset, it didn't reset until I hit the, the trigger a second time. <laughs> yeah. And then it reset. It's a feature, you know. You. Yeah. <laughs> You have to shake the gun for the trigger to reset. Do those guys not know it? The sales reps not see that or feel that? I mean, do they not? I, I don't know. One of the sales guys, I went back there today, and he was you know, talking about you know how great you know all the features of this gun was. And it, the, the thing is, it's a it's a nice. I think it's a nice looking gun. Like it, and it felt felt comfortable in my hand, and I it has like a low profile to it, which is kind of nice. It doesn't feel super bulky, and I was like, oh, this might be nice, and. But then that trigger is just shady. So yeah, and I played with a different one that it wasn't that bad, bad, but it was definitely inconsistent. Interesting. That's that's scary. Yeah. I, we should have asked if we could take one apart and look at the inside. Well, the, the guy had one apart when Did he I came back. Yeah. Oh. He was Interesting. talking about how it recoiled less and stuff. Hmm. I like because around doesn't go off. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, that's a company that, I, I don't know, they, they have this big high-end booth, like booth that costs them, ten, you, know, you know, maybe upwards, I don't know, lots of money, tens and tens of thousands of dollars for this booth. And then they've got nothing that you can buy. Well, what do you mean nothing you can buy? You can buy that that handgun, right? You can't buy any of that. What do you mean you can't buy it? 
The Strike One's not for sale. The Double 1911 is not for sale. What are they? What are they then? They don't have a distributor. They're just for display. Yeah, they're I don't know, building buzz. They're I mean, it's not, really they're not. You can't buy those handguns. No, you can't buy those handguns. That's stupid. <laughs> Did you ask them then what they're doing? I don't know. Interesting. It is interesting to see the booths when you get to uh for the booths when you get to Shot Show because like you're right. How much does an average booth cost when you get there? Like I mean, what do they pay? Is it per square well, footage so or the location? It's it's yeah, it's both. Hmm. Both. <laughs> Both. I mean, it's just interesting because some I was mentioning to Jake that when we were walking around, that some of the booths look just like. I think I think some of the big booths. <laughs> yeah. I, I think some of the you know like the the ones that take like a whole rectangular you know area, yeah. a walkway. I don't know what. Like you the Smith and Wesson. Like one. a city block. Like I think some of those are. Over a hundred thousand. Seriously, wow. I think so. That's crazy. An old man stopped me on the uh, escalator and told me that Shot Show uh, stirs up about twenty-two million dollars in sales every year, and that he said that this year's attendance to Shot Show was bigger than any attendance they've ever had. You know, I haven't seen attendance statistics yet. Yeah, I haven't either. But that's what this old man was saying to me. Yeah, one one surprised me if it was larger than last year. I, I was thinking last year it was like in the 70s, 70,000. Yeah, I don't know. It was packed. I don't remember. And when we had to walk against the flow of traffic tonight, those guys had a single file get in behind me and just, I plowed my way. I'm just kidding. In your truck? No. I I do have to say, people don't realize how tired we are. Ryan just sent a text saying that you look exhausted, Hank. I am. I'm (laughs) fighting to keep my eyes open. Yeah. And I I apologize. I said the, the R51 had a rotating barrel. And it doesn't. <laughs> and I, I knew that. I, Steve, Steve handled it, and he even he even texted me and was like, I, I was really impressed with it, um, and the slide actually feels uh, kind of strange, but it's due to a locking breach on it. So right. um, I'm sorry that I misspoke there. It's okay. We forgive you. Thank you. Just don't want it to happen. And we, I'm not even going to remember what I just said. We'd know more about it if it was a rain day, range day for us. That's right. Or at range day for us. And you can send corrections in to jake at gunguyradio.com. All right. I'd like to thank our sponsor, LA Police Gear, for sponsoring this episode of Gun Guy Radio. LA Police Gear uh, you know, has uh, provided some, well, I guess we're wearing them now, some operator pull tactical open. I, I didn't know we were wearing our shirts, you guys. You didn't tell me. Go get your shirt on. <laughs> Go get your shirt on, Greg. The LA we'll PG. Um, they uh, supplied us, outfitted us with a bunch of shirts and stuff for the show, and um, their three-day operator backpack. Is that what? It's a three-day um, rock. Bug out? No, I call it's my bug out it's bag. Th- yeah, home. it's their three day backpack. Yeah. And uh those were our camera bags for our camera crews out there and it was um, it was such a perfect fit for uh what we needed. Um again, impressed with all the quality coming out of uh LAPG. Yeah, I carried like forty pounds of gear in my backpack. Between Jake At and least. his makeup <laughs> kit. Yes, makeup and his spare <laughs> <little weird>. batteries. <laughs> Powder, powder me. Yep. Shiny nose. All right, you better wrap this show up before we get too loopy. All right. Our sponsors all bail on us. Yeah, LA Police Gear. You know, these polos are, I mean, they feel very high quality, high end, uh, but they're only fourteen ninety nine right now at LA Police Gear, and you can use the discount code GUNGUY. That's right, all one word, GUNGUY, for 10% off. And uh, hurry, the discount uh, offer ends January 31st. And you get them for thirteen dollars and fifty cents, roughly. That's some quick math. I know. Also, I'd like to thank, thank uh, Duluth Trading Company and uh, Mike. You're wearing the Duluth Trading Company polo. I am. Thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> thank you for keeping it on for the whole show too. <laughs> you're welcome. You know what's funny? I only have one. I didn't order like forty. 
Like you? You guys, you wear one the whole week. I wore one shirt the entire week. Uh, I, so I changed my I changed my T-shirt. We you know that's why Greg and I are sitting at this. That's end what of the I'm table. smelling. <laughs> I like I like the Duluth polos because I wore that one on range day because it's heavier. I had this one on range day. It is heavier. <laughs> you had it every day. And, and so, you know, I like that for Illinois weather, but uh, mm-hmm. the, the, down the LA tati- tactical polos are great for more of a summer wear. They're they're lightweight, but, like me, lightweight. Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I'd like to thank Ryan Cross Hunter of Design. Ryan Cross designs all the great artwork in the Firearms Radio Network. Hunter of Design dot com, and uh, you can send feedback, corrections, suggestions to Jake at GunGuyRadio dot com. You're getting a lot of mail for this show. And remember to subscribe to us on iTunes to never miss a show. And also, please leave us an iTunes review, gunguyradio.com slash iTunes. Join the Second Amendment Foundation and the NRA. And uh, don't forget to check out our Android app and our Windows Phone app. Uh, listen or watch us anywhere. And also, firearmsradio.tv. Uh, or, I'm sorry, let me start over. Don't forget to shop you, uh, Brownells. Start over again. Don't forget to shop. <laughs> <laughs> Go read the show notes if you want to see what Jake's trying to say. Don't forget to shop Brownells using our affiliate link, gunguyradio.com slash satisfaction. And we are out of here. Wait, don't you want to say thanks to us? I did earlier. Did earlier. He did? Yeah. Did yeah. you plug my show? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Do you have a show, Greg? I do have a show on the network. All right. Good thing I didn't stop broadcasting yet. No. So what's going on at Tactical Paradise? Did you find anything cool for your show at the show? Yes. We did a SHOT Show recap similar to this show on our last show. But <laughs> other than that, uh, so it's, <laughs> I'm just I wasn't trying to ask you to ask me about my show. I'm just saying to have people check it out, tacticalparadise.com, if they're interested at all. And how do they subscribe to your show on iTunes? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Should we fix my <laughs> iTunes link? <laughs> yes. So they go to, what do they, what do they, oh, tacticalparadise.com forward slash iTunes. Why do you say forward slash? What should I say? Backslash? Just say slash. <laughs> what the, there's, What's wrong? People have started How many doing people that, sit know? down to type in a web address and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know which slash to use." Some people don't. Old people, and they'll thank me for knowing. Forward slash. Hit stop. I'm tired. Oh. Why did Why did the pound symbol have to be called a hashtag? <laughs> you guys are all changing what we were finding right. handy with. Good night. <laughs>Did you know the Firearms Radio Network has a show on fitness? Well, they do, and it's truly inspiring. You have to go check out fattofithq.com slash iTunes. That's fat, the number two, fithq.com slash iTunes. Subscribe now. This has been a production of the Firearms Radio Network. You can find more information at firearmsradio.tv.